Magic the Gathering has been around for 25 years and is one of the most well-known card games in modern time. This game has also brought a very expansive fantasy lore that encompasses roughly the same amount of time. It can be a challenge for someone new to the game that also wants to get into the lore and doesn't know where to start. My name is Coach from the Car Bazaar, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you a couple ways to follow the Magic the Gathering lore from the main sources that includes books, short story articles, and even some filler information that could fill in the gaps of the multiverse. Over the past couple days, i looking at some of the books, summaries, short stories, and some other Magic YouTubers. I'll be presenting two lists that you could use to get a really good picture and follow the Magic the Gathering lore in a pretty solid way. While this is not a 100% correct or concrete list, these are two solid lists that potentially have the best way of going about and understanding the Magic the Gathering lore and getting interested in it. Now, onto the two lists that I have prepared. So my first list that I'm going to be showing y'all, this could be based more on a timeline emphasis, meaning that this is going to be trying to follow the chronological history of Magic based on the timeline, based on the wiki, and based on the dates that are given in the books and some of the short stories. So jumping right on in. The first book you would want to start off with is the book called The Thran, which goes over the origin story of Yawgmoth, the origin of the Phyrexians, and just a little bit about the Thran civilization. After that, you're going to want to go into the Brothers War, which does have a huge gap in between as far as the Dominarian timeline goes, but it falls very nicely with the Thran. And just to mention, the Brothers War was actually published two years before the Thran was. The Brothers War, which is one of the most important pieces of literature in the Magic the Gathering universe, and is probably one of the most loved books of all time. If you go to, over to most people that enjoy Magic the Gathering, one of their top books is The Brothers War. Next after The Brothers War would be the novel The Colors of Magic, which is actually an anthology that goes more or less into multiple short stories, but does have some ties in with the previous book, The Brothers War. Book number four is going to be The Gathering Dark, which goes over the origin story of Joda, the Archmage Eternal. After The Gathering Dark, you'll want to go into the books The Eternal Ice and The Shattered Alliance, which basically goes over how the Ice Age cycle plays out overall. After The Shattered Alliance, which actually ties into a book that we'll talk about later. And this is kind of where it gets a little bit interesting and a little bit kind of wacky at the same time. And just mind you that this first list is going to have a lot of diversions. The next book after the Shattered Alliance are going to be the books Outlaw, Heretic, and Guardian, which are actually the books based on the Kamigawa block. The reason why you want to do this is because in the timeline, this actually happened somewhere between the Shattered Alliance and Planeswalker. And really, the start of Outlaw is going to be actually happening in the Planeswalker novel. But for this list, if you don't want to stop in the middle of a novel just to follow the timeline, my recommendation would be to do the Shattered Alliance and then go straight into the Kamigawa cycle. After Guardian, you'll want to go into Planeswalker and Time Streams, which are part of the Artifact cycle. This continues Urza's adventures thousands of years down the road, and you see these huge time skips kind of like with the Thran and the Brothers War. And then another big diversion following along the timeline is you want to do the Legends 1 cycle, Johan, Jedit, and Hazan, which really kind of goes over into Jamuran's history, the largest continent on the plane of Dominary itself. So after the Legends 1 cycle, you'll want to go into the Legends 2 cycle books, which are known as Assassin's Blade, Emperor's Fist, and Champion's Trial. This more or less expands on Jamuran's history like in the Legends 1 cycle, but also starts to bring the character Nicol Bolas into the picture which becomes a huge character later on, especially in the newer books. After Champion's Trial, you'll want to go and finish off the Artifact Cycle with the last book known as Bloodlines. This continues the Urza story with Talarian Academy, the Thran Artifacts, the Legacy, and all that stuff. And this will also go into the next big storyline, and probably the one that's most popular, the saga that is most well-known by especially older Magic the Gathering players. So, after Bloodlines, you'll want to go into the anthology book of Wrath and Storm, which goes over the Weatherlight crew. The Weatherlight Saga is probably the most well-known story to Magic the Gathering players, and is so in-depth and encompasses many, many, many expansion sets, many years of just magic lore, and it's one of the most well-known stories out there. So, Wrath and Storm after Bloodlines, and then you'll want to go with Mercadian Mask and Nemesis. And this is where we get into another hitch into the list. After Nemesis, you can kind of really play along with this, you can go and finish off by reading the novel Prophecy. But a few things about Prophecy is that it could really actually be encompassed as a standalone product, as a standalone novel, and there's very loose connections with some of the previous books. You could then continue on with Invasion, Plane Shift, and Apocalypse. This continues more or less with the Weatherlight crew, 
and basically finishes off the Yawgmoth storyline. Yawgmoth is one of the most well-known villains in early magic, so it's a nice little ending to one of the most well-known stories and most well-known villains of all time. After the novel Apocalypse, you want to go into the next set of novels known as Odyssey, Chainer's Torment, and Judgment. Now between Apocalypse and Odyssey, there is a 100 year gap. It's still on the plane of Dominaria, but yet it's on another continent itself. The reason why the Odyssey block is so important is because it sets up the Mirari artifact, which will play a role when we talk about some of the other books. But Odyssey really goes over the story of Kamal and the Mirari itself. So you'll go Odyssey, Chainer's Torment, Judgment, which will then go into our next set of books known as Onslaught, Legions, and Scourge. And this is where we hit another diversion. After the Scourge novel, within this list you want to go into the Moons of Mirrodin, the Dark Steel Eye, and the Fifth Dawn book. This basically plays out the story of Glissa, Memnarch, and how the Plane of Mirrodin got corrupted. Then we're going to jump into Ravnica. So continuing on this diversion and getting away from Dominaria, you'll want to jump into Ravnica, Guildpack, and Dissension. So while it does seem a little bit offshoot, Ravnica is going to come into the picture later on, especially with the newer stories. So after the books of Ravnica, Guildpack, and Dissension, we're going to move on to our next books, which are Time Spiral, Planar Chaos, and Future Sight. This is basically where we start getting into the newer material. In this series of books, there's a lot of characters that come into play because of just how the story plays out itself. Time Spiral, Planar Chaos, and Future Sight are where you see probably some of the most flavor and some of the most callbacks to magic just the way the set is designed. This is also where you get the divide between what's known as the pre-mending and the post-mending. And basically where Planeswalkers start to have weaker abilities. While Planeswalkers were a thing with the first set of novels that we had just mentioned, when you get to after Future Sight, Future Sight is the point where the Planeswalkers change completely. Their power levels decrease, their abilities change and become weaker, and even Planeswalking itself becomes different in this time. And then we get into one of the bigger diversions. And what's very interesting about this next book is that also in the set, this is where you start seeing Planeswalker cards in Magic the Gathering. The next book after Future Sight you want to read is Lorwyn and Morningtide. And now we're starting to get more and more out of Dominaria and going into other planes of existence. So Lorwyn and Morningtide, followed by the next books of Shadowmoor and Eventide. After that, you want to go into Agents of Artifice, Alara Unbroken, and the Purifying Fire, which we start seeing things like Tezzeret and what the Shards of Alara and how those planes are set up and also brings more or less Nicol Bolas back into the picture every now and then. After the Purifying Fire, then we're going to go into Zendikar in the Teeth of a Koem, along with Test of Metal, and then going back to Mirrodin with the Scars of Mirrodin, the Quest for Karn. After the Quest for Karn, you want to go into Return to Ravnica, Gatecrash and Dragon's Maze, so going on to another plane of existence, like what they're doing with the Magic the Gathering sets at this point in time. After Dragon's Maze, you want to go into Theros, Godsend, and Journey into Nyx, Godsend 2, which makes it one of the last books for quite some time, until we hit 2018 and 2019. So after Journey into Nyx, you'll actually start going into the magic story. These are stories from DailyMTG.com, and the stories can be found on the MTG Gamepedia website. You'll want to read those stories in order up to the short story called Under the Cover of Fog, because Under the Cover of Fog then we're starting to get slowly into the Ravnica set again, to where Wizard of the Coast starts bringing back novels and are going to continue on from here. After Under the Cover of Fog, you're going to want to read The Children of the Nameless, which not only is still available to print, but the magic YouTuber Voice of All has done even an unofficial audiobook for this particular book. It's a great transformative piece. I highly recommend it. It's a really easy read. It's really easy to follow, and the production quality is great and fantastic. So if you don't want to read some of the short stories from the Wikipedia page or from the Magic the Gathering and DailyMTG.com website, you can actually listen to Voice of All because he's done most or pretty close to all of the short stories that began in that timeline. Next, after Children of the Nameless, you'll want to go into the novel The Gathering Storm, which is a prequel to War of the Spark Ravnica. And then after The Gathering Storm, you're going to want to go into War of the Spark Ravnica. Now this part is going to get a little complicated because you could probably do this in one of two ways. The more complicated way, but also maybe probably the correct way to do this that would make the most timeline sense would be read portions of War of the Spark, then go to the short stories that follow it, and even the short stories have disclaimers of what to read before reading this article. 
So Greg Wiseman actually puts disclaimers in there to make sure you're not getting any spoilers and not ruin the book that you just bought or you just have the audiobook for. The other way you could also do this is just read War of the Spark Ravnica first and then go back to the short stories and read all those collections afterwards. After War of the Spark Ravnica and the short stories that go along with it, you want to finish with the novels War of the Spark Forsaken, Throne of Eldraine and the Wilder Quest, and then Ikoria Lair of the Beast, Sundered Bond. Which, if you're listening to this later down the road, there might be more Magic Gathering novels. But in this video, the last book we have at this point in time in the video is Ikoria Lair of the Beast. So, that's my first list with the perspective of the timeline. As you can see from this timeline, there's a few hitches where you go away from the main story of Dominaria and try to follow different things. But for overall, this follows the chronology pretty decently well. You could probably play with this list a little bit. Like I said, this is not a perfect concrete list. This would be my best way of doing like the research from a timeline perspective, from a numbers perspective, from a year's perspective, probably the best way to go about this. But there's also another list I've created. Now, the second list I have, the main goal of the second list is to have the least amount of diversions possible. As you saw with the first list, you went from Shattered Alliance to Kamigawa. So just a real offshoot, like just in the middle of some of the biggest stories. Then you had some of the Jamurin stories like Jeddit, Emperor's Fist. Johan, Hazon, all that stuff, after you finish like two books from the Dominarian timeline and then get offshooted to another story. So the second list is to have the least amount of diversion. So if you look at the second list, the first two books are actually the same starting off with the Thrain and the Brothers War. However, by the time you get to the third book, where in the first list you had the Colors of Magic, in this list we're actually going to take the Colors of Magic out. And I'll explain why when we get to some of the filler articles and some of the filler lore. The third book in this list is going to be The Gathering Dark, followed by The Eternal Ice and The Shattered Alliance. So basically the Ice Age cycle. After that, you're going to want to go Planeswalker, Time Streams, and Bloodlines, which finishes the Artifact cycle. After Bloodlines, you want to go through Wrath and Storm, Mercadian Mask, Nemesis. You could also include Prophecy in this, like I said previously in the first list. After Prophecy, you want to go into Invasion, Plane Shift, and Apocalypse, and then go into the Mirari storyline of Odyssey, Chainer's Torment and Judgment, followed by Onslaught, Legions, and Scourge. So if you've noticed at this point, we've taken out the Jeddit Johan Hazon, Assassin's Blade, Emperor's Fist, and Champion's Trial, along with the Kamigawa block. Basically, we're taking all those bigger diversions out of the way to make the Dominarian storyline more in flow with significantly less diversion. Now here's where we actually start getting into the big diversion. After Scourge, you want to continue on with the Moons of Mirrodin, the Darksteel Eye, and the fifth dawn. And then after the fifth dawn, in a timeline perspective, we're actually going to go back a thousand years into another plane where we're going to start with Outlaw, Heretic, and Guardian, basically the Kamigawa books. Then we'll go into Johan, Jeddit, Hazon, which is basically the Legends 1 cycle, followed by the Legends 2 cycle of Assassin's Blade, Emperor's Fist, and Champion's Trial. And then after Champion's Trial, we'll go with Ravnica, Guild Pack, Dissension, and after Dissension is where we'll come back to Dominaria, finishing off this portion of the list with Time Spiral, Planar Chaos, and Future Sight. So this portion of the list, this really this big top half of the list, we have basically taken all the small major diversions, and after the set Scourge, we make one huge diversion going from Mirrodin, Kamigawa, back to portions of Dominaria with the Legends 1 and Legends 2 cycle, but they really don't follow the main storyline that much, with the exception of introducing Nicol Bolas into the later content, and then going into Ravnica, and then coming back to Time Spiral. This doesn't follow the timeline nearly as well as the first list, but this has the least amount of diversion. We're going to take much of that diversion and just put it into one list, and basically make it into the Magic the Gathering spinoff that's going to last up until we come back to Time Spiral. After Future Sight, we're going to basically conclude with the same list, starting off with Lorwyn and finishing off with Ikoria. And so to finish off both of these lists, actually, I really didn't have a way to categorize these. Basically, if you look at the last bits of the lore that are out there, um, these are more or less generalizations, more of the filler pieces that kind of help expand some of the world you just read about. For instance, you have the anthology books, which we mentioned the Colors of Magic, like in the first list, trying to read it after the Brothers War. You also have the other anthology books, Myths of Magic. Dragons of Magic, Secrets of Magic, and Monsters of Magic that kind of tell of the different species and some of the different stuff going on with magic as a whole. Like I said, filler pieces. You also have Planeswalker's Guides, and there were five of these books. You have the Planeswalker's Guide to Alara, Zendikar, New Phyrexia, Innistrad, and Avacyn Restored, 
which basically fills in the gaps with some of the stuff that really some of the other books don't talk about. You also have other magic story articles that talk about like play testing and the flavor designs. You also have flavor text from the different cards that also talk about some of the stories referenced in the list we just gave. And if you look at MTG Gamepedia, you can find article names about the Duelist, Wizards of the Coast, and Top Deck. There's also numerous comic books, both physical and web comics. And there's even an Urza and Misha Japanese manga that was released back in 2010. There are other story sources from the Harper Prism Publishing books, which was how Magic the Gathering stories were first printed, but those are considered not canonical anymore. Ever since the retelling of The Brothers War by Jeff Grubb back in mid-1998, as far as the canon of Magic really starts kind of roughly with The Brothers War and goes from there. Basically, anything before May of 1998 is really considered non-canon for the most part. There's a lot of contradictory information that goes along with that. And there was even the Antiquities War and Urza and Misha comic books that have a pretty good amount of difference between what Jeff Grubb wrote back in 1998. So that's all I have for you guys. If you like this list, this, like I said, this is just my recommendation of how you should follow the magic lore. And really, you don't have to read the entire novels. If you're on the MTG Gamepedia page, you can really look at the summaries for most of these stories. There are a few novels in the Gamepedia wiki that are not filled in or just have like a blurb from the actual novel itself. But if you want to read the novels, you know, this is a list I put together with a lot of research that I put in for the last two or three days, just trying to encompass all of Magic the Gathering in a good flow and just to make understanding the lore of magic a little bit easier. So those are the lists I have for you guys today. If you think I'm completely wrong in these lists, just leave a comment and I'll respond to it. If you have any suggestions of how to revise the list, please do so in the comments. Like I said, you could even message me on Twitter by going to coach at the Carbazar CC. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Magic the Gathering lore and Magic the Gathering videos like this one. And if you also want to get a head start on getting into the lore itself, you can also check out my other videos that I did by listening to the unofficial audiobooks that this channel has done with the first three books, The Thran, The Brothers War, and The Gathering Dark. Check those out by going to the Car Bazaar playlist to listen to them now. If you also want to check out other Magic YouTubers, the first person would be Voice of All, who does the short stories over Magic the Gathering. Sybin over at Aetherhub, who's been doing magic lore since 2012, and also Connor at Spice 8 Rack, who does lore analysis videos, with one of his best works being the Yawmoth analysis video. Go check out these three great content creators after this video. Links will be in the description. That is all I have for today, everyone. Coach with the Carbazar signing out, and I'll see you all next time.